Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this injury box. It's called Ali and it's done by a company called Azul. These guys always bring boxes that are windows related and now they have made something a little bit different. This is going to work on ARM base processor CPU that is done by Qualcomm. Here you go. Now we have it on an Android box. I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click to click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification icon, select all, in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click to click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. And here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this little card when you go into the back, tells you to share your experience and also if you need technical assistance, where you can get help from. Now it does come with this power adapter. And this part is in the plastic. Let me just take it out. This part will be connecting to the box. But when you go to this section, you can deattach this part, but they only given us one which will be for United States and Canada. And when you order from different part of the world, they will be shipping you the proper part. But if you look in the back, this one is five volt, three amps, which is about 15 watt, which is really good. That means this box do require a little more juice and this will be able to provide it for you. Now here is the box itself. I really like how they always design their boxes. It's always a little bit on a heavier case. That means is that it is plastic, but the way that they have managed to put everything together, and I'm sure that it's the heat sink that makes it a little bit heavier, but it looks really cool the way that it has been designed. I really like that little cuts that they have placed. And when you look on the top, and when you look in the front part of it too, the name is written really nicely. This is a power button that you can press and then the IR indicator is in the front in that little cut. I really like how they have designed it. When you go to one side of it, you have a TF card reader and then you have three USB 2.0 ports. And when you go to the back part of it, you have a audio jack. You also have a ADB lock and the lock is over here too. I really like how they have placed that. You have two HDMI out. You also have a LAN connection and then the power, which is five volt, three amp. And when you go to the other side of it, there's nothing here. And then when you flip it to the back or to the bottom part is where you're going to see more. Now, a lot of holes for ventilation, yes. You have four little rubber legs. So this way, when you put it on the actual table, it is not going to move that much. Well, this one does, but because of the weight, I am sure it's not going to be able to move that much when you put heavier cable in the back, especially this one takes two HDMI cables. And then there is a LAN connection. And also you see there is four little parts for the screw. So this way you can mount it at the back of your TV. And that's what really this was meant for, or you want to put it on the wall. So this way it's easily going to be able to mount. The name is really nicely written and also they have indicated the SKU and also the input. Just in case if you have a misplace your power supply, then you will be able to check it out from here. Easily you're going to get access. There is also the serial number and also the MAC addresses in the bottom. So this way you can get access more using this box itself. All right, enough said about it. Let's get this connected and see what's involved in it. Now again, for CEC purposes, we will connect the HDMI wire first and then the power. Now, in order to turn it on, you have to press the button one time. And now you can see the power turning on. When you turn it on, this is the first screen you will see. Now, remember that this is still in production. And then just like phones, yes, you will hear that too. And just like phones, you will get all this. So what I have done is I have hooked up a regular computer mouse to this to make it work. Now I have not placed any Android remotes to this yet. So that way we can make the video. So for that, I already launched, I already installed another launcher, but for the meantime, we're gonna use the main launcher that came with it. So when you load it for very first time, this is what you should see. 
And when you flip, there's nothing involved in this. So when you go on into something like settings, it just shows the browser. That's about it. And this browser does not really work. So what we have done is if you go from the bottom and you flip up, then you're going to see some apps. Now there's different apps that we have installed and there are some apps that, that just came with it, but it was very basic. So number one is that once you get it, you got to go to settings, scroll up a little bit, first connect to the internet, and then go to display. Over here, you have to go to advanced, scroll down a little bit, and then make sure the font is small and the display size is all the way to the bottom, except that it looks humongous and it doesn't look that great. That's one thing. Another thing is this bar in the bottom, the status bar. Now, we try to figure out how we can turn it off. Maybe you can see it right now, but I don't. Another thing I've done is bright, bring the brightness from 70% to 100%. It's right over here. The theme, I left it as regular. So I didn't turn it on, I didn't put on a schedule, so it will change because it adapts the day and time just like your regular phone because of the chip itself but that's about it and then wallpaper I did not change it I kept it all the same now if you go down there's more information here but let's see how much we're going to get info out of it just by playing with this so number thing that we had done is we got some apps number one was Aptoid because Google Play Store is not part of it and I don't see it and I do not want to install it at the meantime to make it quickly this is what we have done this is how it basically looks now we will go into the Geekbench now you have to understand that this is an octa-core box you can see there's four cores which is running 1.8 and there's another four cores which is running 2.02 gigahertz it is a Qualcomm chipset and this is Android 10 but we have already processed a Geekbench now when we processed it with a single core we got 306 most of the Android boxes that we see doesn't matter if it was AM logic or it was the regular all winner the single core always stayed in 100 range total 150 it did not I did not see anything over that now this is for multi-core it went to 1302 I really like this already and you can see the size of the memory as 3.54 again it just talks by itself I do not have to say anything the next thing we're going to cover will be AIDA 64 now this app will get a lot of things in raw yes it will be raw but let's just go to it and let's just cover it you can see that the manufacturer name is Qualcomm now going down there's a device the product and if you see in the bottom it says RAM installed as 4 gigabyte the ones that are used and the ones that's available is right underneath of it and then the internal storage on this is 64 gigabyte you can see that right now how much is available and the Bluetooth on this, we know that they are indicated 5, but it shows 4 plus. Now, this is something with the app problem and the actual PCBA board or motherboard on this box itself. Now, when you go to the SOC, or in this case, the CPU, you can see it says Qualcomm Snapdragon, and here is the number. I really like it the way that they have placed the cores. It is 4x4, four four. that means it's an octa-core processor, and it is lower powered for the very first 4 cores and it is 1804 megahertz and then for the second one it is on high powered and this one is running on 2016 megahertz I really like that if you look a little bit down these are all the cores and the way that they are running and the ones that are sleeping and you can see that the CPU utilization does not reach to a 40 percent it's always less than that which is really good and it just depends of what you want to use it for and then it shows you more now if you want to go down a little bit it talks about that the scaling governor is scheduled i'm using a mouse so it's not really being user friendly at the meantime except i have to hold it and it's just going back but you can see that it is working on this part now getting out and going into display for the meantime, the native resolution on this is 720p, and you can see the rest of the information that you're looking for. 
and I'm just looking for the GPU. It is going to be still under Qualcomm and the rendering on this is called Reno and it is 610 and the current clock speed for this GPU is 320 but you can see that that the clock range goes up to 950 the GPU utilization is there too I really like that and on top of that the fresh rate on this is 60 Hertz and then the orientation of course going to be on landscape mode unless you want to switch it for your digital signage and the OpenGL on this is 3.2 which is really good if you want to install some games it will work for you perfectly now when we go to network and you want to scroll down a little bit it is 5g supported of course and we will show you on the speed test part that how that works now by default this comes with Android 10, API level on this S29 and the rest of the information that you're looking for is underneath of it. So the sensors are not part of this, they have disabled that part. But once we go down a little bit under codecs, you can see that there is a lot of codecs that is involved. I am sure you're going to like playing with this because it's going to work for you a lot better than the other ones. So this is really cool to look at and say, wait, it has most of the codecs that we really need and we're looking for. This is Nova Launcher and we installed it. It works pretty cool, by the way. It functions right the way that we are always wanted it. So something like if I have to go from the bottom up, you will be able to see all of the icons that we have installed and the ones that they have placed. One thing I have to mention is that this box has to work on is this little navigation in the bottom that you have to hide it or you need to put it down totally because even if you want to put this on a digital signage, it goes invisible in the background, but it's not going to disappear. I am sure they know what they're doing and I know that this is just a testing box that they have sent us but I wish they would get rid of that for us too so this way it works better we check their website there's no updates except that we want to press home and this way you will be able to see another launcher that we have installed inside of this I'm just going to just try to bring it up and there you go now this is another launcher that we have placed this is really cool launcher by the way you can see it that it's really nicely going to work once you start playing but there are these settings that is out there and now you will be able to change your background, place more apps on it, and it will be all on the first list. And this way you can go through to play with it. Let's just cover a few more things before we go next is I did not cover these two is because when we try to play a video, it just shows a little bit of it. And I hope that they're going to watch this and they're going to fix it for us on another update. And same with YouTube TV. When we go to it, it's totally frozen. It doesn't even allow us to type anything or select any apps. So I'm sure that those are going to be resolved, except that this box is beautiful. It's very powerful. I'm sure that this will be one of the boxes, hopefully in the near future, on our desk so we can play it as media player for our home. And then we can put some of our old devices away, something like. Now, the next thing we're going to launch will be the speed test. Now, we have already processed this and these are our readings. As you can see, when we go to the results, the first one that we have done was with Wi-Fi and we got 191 for our download and 49 for our upload. And for our download, you can see the arc that is going straight, but for our upload, it was a little bit up and down. It went a little bit above 15 and it stayed back down. So as you can see in the bottom part of it, it talks about the idle time, it's about 20. We were really hoping to get roughly about 16, but in this case, it did not happen. Now, when we did it again using the Wi-Fi itself, you can see that the fluctuation on the download was a little bit better than before, and it stayed on 195 for our download. But when we did the upload, it just crawled down almost to 60, then went back down to 20 then it went back to 44 and it just stayed there but if you really look for idle time in the bottom it went down just one point again it's not bad for wi-fi itself and then when we did it with LAN connection for the very first time we got 294 and just stayed steady and then for our upload just steady all the way through to 28.2 you can see my idle time still stayed on 19 while i am connected via LAN connection now when we did it for very last time this is all using landline and you can see that my download rate went up to 300 and my upload rate also went up a little bit to 51.2 
but my idle time still stayed a little bit higher. Now these are all going to be fluctuated when you are connected to the internet, how much people are on your network, and also because this is a home-based internet, you're getting it from an ISP and not just dedicated one for your work. That's why you see the fluctuations with idle time and when you connect it, because it's all going to be shared and how they're going to distribute it to you. And also how much they're going to bog down, so that way everybody that is on right now working wise or watching TV or even watching YouTube and more through their devices, how this been distributed out to you guys. And this is why you see a little bit difference when it comes to the speed test. And this was our take. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click to click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment on the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is xtext.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.